What's up, everybody? After a long offseason, we are back with some NFL DFS picks and lineup advice for DraftKings and FanDuel. This time, first of the season for tonight's Thursday night showdown. Week one, season opener, showdown slate, single game, Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens. Welcome. I'm Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy. Welcome back, everyone. All of you new viewers, welcome. We are glad to have you. What we're going to do in this video and what we're going to do in these videos, every single primetime showdown slate during the week, we're going to talk about the injuries that impact the DFS slate. We will talk about low-risk lineup construction tips, 50-50s, double-ups, head-to-heads, and then give you ideas and strategies and picks for the largest contest on DraftKings and FanDuel. $1 million up top on DraftKings. Big prizes out there tonight, and we're here to help you. And if you're new or you maybe forgot who I am, you may be wondering, why should I listen to this guy? What does this guy have over any of these other people on YouTube doing showdown videos? Well, if you play contests with, I don't know, 15 people, I've won those in showdown. Maybe 100 people. Yep, I've won those too. What about 200 people? Oh, yeah, we've won those as well. And if you're playing the biggest contest on DraftKings, why not talk to someone and listen to someone who's done it solo? Million dollar top prize. First person ever to win a million dollars solo on DraftKings Showdown Contest. So we got you here at Occupy Fantasy. So strap in and let's talk about tonight's Chiefs and Ravens slate. Now, let's start with low risk contests. But before we do, let's talk about the one injury that does impact the slate. That is Hollywood Brown. Free agent, free agent acquisition for Kansas City coming over from Arizona, formerly of Baltimore. Uh, he hurt his shoulder in preseason. He will miss tonight's game. That leaves Rashi Rice as the number one receiver for Kansas City. It leaves their first-round rookie speedster, Xavier Worthy, in the starting lineup. And then they'll have some rotation, but probably some combination of Justin Watson, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Miko Hardman, and maybe Sky Moore uh, to round out the rest of their starting receiver group. So just Hollywood Brown that we're worried about. Uh, he is out. And uh, it's kind of nice because now we don't have to sweat inactives on the very first showdown slate of the year. We have 17-plus weeks of that to do that. So uh, tonight we can put our lineups in pretty early and not have to worry about what happens later before the game starts. All right, now let's talk about these low risk contests, 50 50s, double ups, head to heads. It's where you have to beat half the field to double your money. Very low risk, uh, but it has gotten tougher over the years for showdown contests. Let's start on DraftKings. And a quick refresher for those of you who uh, maybe have forgotten, haven't played showdown contests in a, in a, in a year. Uh, in our estimation, our strategy at Occupy Fantasy is in showdown contests, low-risk lineups. We want to tr try to capture all the scoring. And by doing that, we play both quarterbacks, both running backs. That way, whenever a touchdown is scored in the game, we have that in our lineup. But it can be tricky for some slates. Uh, and tonight, it is one of those slates where it is tricky. If we try to do that and we play Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. Now, remember, uh, Derrick Henry has come over from the Titans. He has joined the Ravens and will be their lead back. Let's try to get this in the flex. Uh, and then Isaiah Pacheco, the lead back for Kansas City, that leaves just $2,800 per player. Even if we switch it up and we play Pacheco at captain, $3,300 per player. We're generally not looking to punt two spots in our showdown lineups, whether that's DraftKings or FanDuel. It's really not the way you want to go. Not to mention, we already talked about Rasheed Rice as the number one receiver. Generally, number one receivers, especially of uh, those who are catching passes from Patrick Mahomes, are priced higher than $7,600. He's actually cheaper than Zay Flowers. And as a result, if you look at it around industry projections, Rashi Rice is the best value on the slate, especially for the studs. So at $7,600, a vast majority of opposing low-risk lineups will include Rashi Rice. And we think that should be the case as well. So in fact, in order to fit in some players, you can even captain Rashi Rice on DraftKings in your low-risk lineups. Uh, he'll be 20% plus in those contests at the captain spot as far as ownership goes. And now you can fit in. If we try to fit in the, the core four of the two quarterbacks, two running backs, it looks like this. Lamar, Mahomes, Henry, Pacheco. Can't do that. 600 per player. So we have to leave one of these guys out. And to me, and uh, projections say the same thing, we're going to fade the running back who won't play much on passing downs and is the underdog in this game, and is more expensive than the opposing running back. So that's Derrick Henry. we going to leave Derrick Henry out. That leaves Pacheco. And now we can punt one position and pay up for the second position. And some punts that we like in the $1,500 to $3,000 range, there are a couple that stand out. 
One is Isaiah Likely at $2,600. Number two tight end for uh, Baltimore. We imagine they run more two tight end sets uh, given how Likely has performed when Andrews has been out in the past. Andrews is in tonight, but Likely uh, should get a decent amount of snaps. We also have Justin Watson, who we talked about. And then Samaj P. Ryan, who was signed very recently, but is going to fill that Jarek McKinnon role of third down work, uh, splitting snaps, some with Isaiah Pacheco. So either Likely or P. Ryan, let's just put P. Ryan in, at least 5,400 per player. We could play Rashad Bateman or one of the kickers. That's decent. If we play Isaiah Likely, let's go down. That could leave us, let's not do that actually. Let's put in uh, Pacheco as we wanted to. 5,800, we could fit in Xavier Worthy if we wanted to do that. Uh, or if you wanted to captain Mahomes or Lamar, and as the favorite, we prefer Mahomes tonight. And let's put Rashi Rice in the flex. 4,400 with likely. We could play Justice Hill. We could play a defense. Uh, we could play Justin Watson. So there are some options tonight. It's not the best low risk slate, but the keys are playing Mahomes, Lamar, and this is on DraftKings, Rashi Rice, Isaiah Pacheco. Figure out which punt you want to use of that remaining group and then fill out with a mid tier player. And you can even work it some, especially if you go a little bit lower, which we would not recommend, but you could go down to someone like Juju, who's going to play some, uh, or one of these other $200 players, and you could pay up for a, th a fourth stud. It's possible as well. Now, if we look on FanDuel, if we try to do our approach, and sometimes we can do this. We absolutely cannot do it on FanDuel tonight. That leaves us negative $1,500 for our last spot. And so what you have to do on FanDuel tonight, and again, we're recommending skipping low-risk contests on FanDuel. There are plenty of slates in the future we can play. But either one of two things you have to do in 50-50s, double-ups, head-to-heads on FanDuel tonight for, um, for this game is either fade both running backs we play both quarterbacks as it gives us extremely high floor and ceiling. That leaves us 8,500 per player. We can make that work. Or we fade one of the quarterbacks and play one of the running backs or both the running backs. If we fade Lamar, let's just say, it's very scary to do. But we play Derrick Henry, Isaiah Pacheco, 7,750 per player. We can make that work. So yes, it is scary to do that, but that is what you have to do. And that's why it is not a very good low risk slate on really on either side, but especially on FanDuel tonight. So Either fade one of the quarterbacks or fade both of the running backs. Uh, neither are that preferable tonight. All right. Now, what everyone is here for, high-risk contests. Leagues, satellites, GPPs. You risk a little bit to potentially win a lot. Exponential payouts. That is what high-risk contests are. They can span anywhere from 20 people uh, to how many people are in this contest tonight? 196,000 people. And in our daily plug, OccupyFantasy.com, I'll pull it up for you really quickly. We give you rankings for different contest types in our daily plug, and then we give you lineup strategies for different contest types for both sites. So no matter how big the contest is and what type of contest it is, we got you covered in the daily plug. So make sure you go check that out after this video. It is already posted for tonight's slate. Uh, but if we talk about small field contest four, we're thinking 200 players or less. We don't have to get too different. We just need one point of differentiation. So in these contests, we get play sort of like a low risk lineup. Uh, and just switch out one player who's low-owned. If we bring up our Occupy model, OccupyFantasy.com ranks every player for FanDuel and DraftKings for showdown slates with projected ownership for the primetime slate. So that's Thursday. It will be Friday this week, uh, Sunday night, and Monday night football. And we're just looking for one player that's less than 20% owned for our smaller contest. We can easily do that. And if we look at uh, our Occupy model, you'll see some guys are 0% owned. We're looking at the DK percentage column here. This is their projected flex ownership. We'll see some guys like Carson Steele, Jarrett Wiley. These guys are pure trash plays, large field contests only. We're not going to play those in our small field lineups. Uh, but if we look at, let's look at DK percentage, 5% or higher. And we look down to, let's say 22%. The kickers pop towards the top. That is very understanding. It's a very uh, loose salary slate. You can fit in most players without having to resort to playing kickers or defenses. Now, I still think because these guys are name brand, Bucker and Tucker, they'll probably still get over that 20% mark. And maybe they'll get there in small field GPPs as well. But they're very good plays tonight, especially in smaller contests, and especially what we've seen from kickers in historical small field showdown contests. But we look at other guys who are less than 20% owned. Samaj P. Ryan, Rashad Bateman, Isaiah Likely, who we've talked about, uh, Noah Gray, Backup tight end, $1,600. He'll see a lot of snaps tonight in Kansas City's offense. Justice Hill, not many people are going to play him as the number two running back at $4,400 on DraftKings. Uh, and Nelson Aguilar, in addition to the defenses. So all you have to do is play one of these guys in your small field GPPs. 
uh, and you are different. And you could do pretty much what else, whatever else you want with the rest of the lineup. Uh, and you'll have a differentiated, good, high floor, high ceiling lineup. I would say of this group, I really like, and I know our staff likes Rashad Bateman. Our model likes them as the top receiver after Samaj P. Ryan and the kickers. Uh, Rashad Bateman, number two receiver. Didn't play in preseason, cemented as a number two receiver in Baltimore's offense. Yes, a little bit tough matchup with Kansas City's corners, but in a game where they likely will be trailing at some point and have to keep up, uh, Bateman is an excellent play. We have him at less than 20% owned. Uh, and P. Ryan, we'll see how he, how highly owned he gets. If optimizers and sims are pushing him out, he may end up as the popular value play tonight. We'll keep an eye on that, and we'll update the daily plug if so. Uh, but Justice Hill, another one. If you expect Baltimore to trail in this game, Hill to play more third down snaps and more hurry up offense, he's an easy play at $4,400. That's going to be sub 10% owned, so you really don't have to get much different after that either. Uh, and one other note tonight. Let's go back to uh, the DraftKings lineup screen here. As I said, pricing is pretty loose. So typically, you're not looking to spend uh, or, or leave a few hundred bucks or more left over in your small field GPP lineups or your low-risk lineups. But you might do that tonight because the pricing isn't as tight. And so even if you leave $400, $600, $900 left over on the table, do not worry about it tonight because pricing is pretty soft. Uh, and that's just a function of how the salaries were published for this slate. Uh, if we talk about FanDuel small field GPPs, Really, you're just playing Mahomes or Lamar at MVP. Again, 200 players or less. We don't have to get that different. We just need one low-owned option. Those guys I just mentioned all fit the bill here on FanDuel as well. Play Mahomes or Lamar. Correlate appropriately. Get one lower-owned guy in your flex spots, and you're good to go. Now, I know what most of you want to listen to this video for are the large field GPPs, where I won the million dollars, where you could potentially win the million dollars tonight. Uh, let's get a quick water break, uh, and then we'll talk about the high-risk large field contest selection. Still no, still no water sponsor just yet. I haven't tried very hard, but if you guys know, or if you're watching and you want to sponsor the water break, let us know. <laughs> we'll have that every showdown video. Uh, so some high-risk strategies for the largest contest on FanDuel and DraftKings. I think easily the number one answer tonight is playing for a lower scoring than expected game. Right? No one wants to play the defenses. If we go back to our Occupy model, we see Kansas City's defense 17% projected ownership. Ravens defense just 6% projected ownership. Anytime we play for lower scoring games, that's how I won the million in the Super Bowl a few years ago. You play for games that are lower scoring than expected. Not only uh, do you win more when you're right, you split with less people, and you have lower, lower, uh, lower owned lineups that are correlated. It's really nice to play for... And it, honestly, if you just play every single showdown slate, large field GPPs, and maybe even small field GPPs, you play for a lower scoring game, including a defense, uh, you'd probably be profitable at the end of the year if you just only did that for the entire season. So uh, maybe one of you out there can do a test run or a case study you know, on if you played a defense and lower scoring uh, game script for every showdown slate, do you come out ahead at the end of the year? I think you would. Uh, so playing Chiefs defense or Ravens defense and playing... Uh, for a lower scoring game around that, running back captains, running back MVPs, especially on FanDuel, uh, really good way to go about for the largest contest tonight, especially when you consider Kansas City has a rookie left tackle that they're playing. Baltimore lost three veteran offensive linemen during the offseason. So some offensive line uh, shakeups for both teams just gives more credibility to uh, playing the defense in your lineups in the largest contest tonight. And Baltimore didn't play all preseason. We saw them start slow in the first half of the first game last year with a similar approach. Uh, it's possible it happens again tonight, especially on the road. So defense is really good high-risk strategy tonight. Uh, leave more salary on the table. As I said, it's already loose. You can leave him even more than you normally would, 1,000 plus, 2,000 plus in some instances, because you figure if you look down here, it, it may sound crazy from a median projection standpoint, but how often does Xavier Worthy, the speedster, outscore Rashi Rice? So Worthy is 5,800. Rice is $7,600. That's $1,800 difference. How often does Bateman, $5,200, outscore Zay Flowers, $8,000, $2,800 difference? It's not a 0% chance. So even if you just swap down from Rice or Flowers to one of the, the secondary receivers and leave a regular lineup around that, that's really differentiated because not many people are going to do that. So that is another, uh, another strategy here tonight. Uh, next on both sides, we expect the field to gravitate towards Kansas City heavy lineups, and rightfully so given the spread and the pricing. So that means on DraftKings, we'll see a lot of Kansas City captains and or 4-2 builds, 5-1 builds, where we have four Chiefs in the lineup or five Chiefs in the lineup 
on FanDuel will see three Chiefs in the lineup or sometimes four Chiefs in the lineup, primarily by the field. What the field is not going to do is play Baltimore heavy lineups. So four or five Ravens in the lineup, three over on FanDuel. So that's another easy way. Uh, and what you can do is you can open our lineup builder, OccupyFantasy.com slash lineup builder. I use it every single showdown slate, no matter which type of contest I'm playing. And you can set different rules. What does it look like if I put a max of two Chiefs in a DraftKings lineup? A max of one Chief. Spit out lineups. See what it looks like. And you can take some of those. Or do the flip side. What, is that, what does it look like if I play five Chiefs in every single lineup? Uh, and you can get a great idea of the lineups that are possible when you use the rules in our lineup builder. Same goes for the ownership and small field GPPs. A max or min of one of these guys under 20%. What do the lineups look like? What are the possibilities? So even if you're not building 20 plus lineups or 150 lineups, the lineup builder is still really uh, profitable and a great tool, even if you're only building one showdown lineup. So I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. Um, and finally, a great way to get different in large field GPPs is to play the trash guys, I like to call them. Uh, no offense to them. But the guys that are 5% or less owned, I'll give you a couple names that stand out. I think the number one for me tonight is Tylen Wallace, will be the wide receiver four for Baltimore. The coaches and the reporters, they really want this guy to be a thing. Uh, and he'll mix in tonight. He's clearly the wide receiver four on this team. It's not the rookie Devontae Walker. It's Tylen Wallace, $1,400. All he needs is one catch, maybe two. And God forbid he catches a touchdown. He's in the optimal lineup. So I like playing Tylen Wallace tonight. He'll rotate some with Nelson Aguilar. Uh, Carson Steele. If you played preseason DFS, you definitely know the name. Carson Steele is 200 on DraftKings. More of a DraftKings. Most of these guys are DraftKings plays. Um, on FanDuel, Tylen Wallace, some of the receivers are uh, large field FanDuel plays. Uh, but guys like Carson Steele, mostly a DraftKings play. He could be the number two running back tonight. It's more than likely going to be P. Ryan, right? Everything we've read is P. Ryan. But if P. Ryan's not up to speed with the playbook, we doubt he he's not. I'm sure he's going to be fine. But if he's not, or if God forbid Pacheco gets injured or P. Ryan gets injured. Steele is the next guy in line. Yes, he's listed as a fullback on the depth chart, played exclusively at running back in the preseason. Uh, so running back two, three at min price tonight. Could do worse than that. Patrick Ricard, known for a rogue touchdown or a catcher two, fullback for the Ravens. He's $400. Uh, we talked about some of the rotational receivers for uh, Kansas City. Mostly it's going to be on Rashi Rice and Xavier Worthy. Justin Watson will get some as well, who we also like. Uh, but Juju, his snaps will be monitored, but he knows the playbook. Uh, he's 1K on DraftKings. Sky Moore, $2,200. Don't like him as much. Uh, likely the wide receiver six. But again, it's the first week of the season. We could be very wrong about these back-end rotations. So Sky Moore, 1%, 2% owned. And Miko Hartman, Super Bowl hero, $1,800. will mix in as well. So uh, lots of ways to get different in large field contests tonight. And yes, it's 196,000 people to beat on DraftKings. It is 132,000 people to beat on FanDuel, but we can do it. It's possible. But I will say this. It is the first slate of the first week of a long season. Manage your bankroll properly, especially the through the first couple of weeks as we gather info on how these teams are using their players and running their offenses. So I know we're all excited. Let's, uh, let's just take a, a step back. Let's play light tonight. We got another slate tomorrow, which I will be back for with a video. Make sure you're subscribed, by the way, here on YouTube. Uh, it's free to do so. I know many of you only watch free videos. You're not ever going to subscribe to a site for information. We understand that. This is why we do these videos for you. Click subscribe. If you're a YouTube junkie like I am and you're always on YouTube, this video, when it's released for every showdown slate uh, during the week, it'll pop up on your recommended page on YouTube. Uh, but if you're not on YouTube very often, click the bell notification after subscribing. That way, whenever we post a video, you'll get a notification directly to your phone that we've posted the video. So uh, just the best way to get notified when we post these videos. So I'll, I'll have a video for tomorrow's Friday showdown slate. Uh, Chris, our NFL manager, will have a video for the main slate, the classic slate on Sunday, uh, on Friday night. And then I'll be back Monday for the Monday night football video. We do not do Sunday night football videos. I'm sorry, but we do have a daily plug at OccupyFantasy.com. And on that note, for those of you who want that extra edge, yeah, you like listening to me every showdown slate. You like listening to Chris for the main slates. But you want all the tools that we use. You want the projections. You want the lineup builder. You want the advice and the daily plugs. Again, rankings and slate thoughts and lineup construction tips for different contests. Our projections, these are very different than normal projections. These are our proprietary projections for high-risk contests with projected ownership. The builder allows you to build the 300 lineups with optimal lineup criteria. As little as $7 a week, OccupyFantasy.com. All the links are in the description. The daily plug is up for tonight's slate, so go check it out. Uh, all right, guys, that'll do it. Let's get excited. Drop a comment for how excited you are tonight. 
below. Let's see if we can get over, I don't know, 50 comments on tonight's video. Let's see if we can get 200 likes. Uh, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. Best way to support the channel. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can also comment below. I'll monitor the channel throughout the day. But Discord is the best way. OccupyFantasy.com slash Discord is where I, as long as the rest of the staff, are in there throughout the day. Come sweat out the games with us. Chat with other members of the community. Get your questions answered. OccupyFantasy.com slash Discord. Link is in the description. So, Brian Jester, Occupy Fantasy. We're back. Good luck tonight. And I'll see you tomorrow for Packers and Eagles.